Well, in a shocking and entirely unpredictable sequence of events, yet another coordinated effort from the hate stream media who hate you and hate humanity. A futile attempt to destroy the reputation of Elon Musk in the eyes of the NPC public. This time, round two of Elon Musk's drug use worries leaders at Tesla and SpaceX. <laughs> I have many thoughts. In that piece of, that was in the journal, Wall Street Journal over the weekend, it says some executives and board members at Elon Musk's companies are persistently concerned about his drug use. Musk has previously smoked marijuana in public and on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he has uh, said that he has a prescription for ketamine. Now, the journal report uh, cites people who have witnessed Mr. Musk's uh, alleged drug use and others who have knowledge of it as saying that Musk has used LSD, cocaine, ecstasy and psychedelic mushrooms, often at parties, private parties around the world. So first of all, these are alleged witnesses to alleged drug use. Second, I wouldn't be surprised if all but the nose candy of those had in fact been witnessed being used. Happy to speculate on that. I don't have evidence, but it would not surprise me. True or otherwise, what an adult chooses to do in their own time with their own consciousness is their own business. Now, why out of absolutely nowhere did this report from the Balls Deep Journal appear? If I didn't know any better, and I obviously do, but if I didn't know any better, I might suggest, perhaps a little cynically, that this is yet another attempt from the rightfully threatened hate stream media who, again, hate you and hate humanity to damage the reputation of big bad Elon, whose acquisition of X will ultimately accelerate the demise of the fake news. They're scared, they're threatened, and the attacks continue to ramp up. Oh, and remember the whole presidential election in the United States happening within 12 months? Yeah, the attacks are going to accelerate, become even more ridiculous. The irony of ironies, of course, is going to be that outside of the small bubble of the hate stream media and a few rattles in the fairly empty craniums of people who think drugs are bad, okay? And that's the depth of their understanding. I actually think that this attempt to do reputational harm and damage to Elon Musk is going to further elevate the man among people whose brains work and understand the current classification of certain, quote, drugs. And I hate to even use that umbrella term because it just it covers too many things. The classifications in terms of the scheduling in the United States in particular makes no sense that many of these things have incredible utility. And I'm not attempting to glorify this stuff, but I am pointing out there are a lot of people today perhaps with some of their own personal experiences with some of these tools that Elon Musk apparently allegedly has used, you've seen great benefit from them. Oh, I didn't know that. You mean Elon's taken LSD and shrooms? Huh, I like the guy even more now. So I think this is going to be the ultimate backfire from the hate stream media. Don't get me wrong. There are a few butthurt, angry grandmothers and people who are a little bit naive, who are brainwashed, especially via the war on drugs. I think all drugs are bad and therefore Elon bad, but... I think those folks are going to be in the minority, but certainly makes for a great headline. An attorney for Musk told the journal that uh, Mr. Musk is regularly and randomly tested at SpaceX and has never failed a test. Uh, the journal reports as board members at Tesla have spoken to each other about their concerns, but haven't said anything uh, formal that would end up in meeting minutes. Uh, but among the concerns you might think. Okay, so hold up. So what is this hearsay and rumors? Apparently members of Tesla's board have spoken among themselves, but not in meetings that would end up on meeting minutes. Therefore, what evidence do we have about this? Oh, allegedly somebody who allegedly might know something said allegedly this may have occurred. This, ladies and gentlemen, is journalism in 2024. Anonymous sources potentially inventing stories. No evidence provided. Media runs with it. I personally would be more concerned if there were anyone on Tesla's board who was dumb enough to think that a person, a creative person, changing the world doing incredible mind-blowing engineering, potentially recreationally utilizing psychedelics would be a problem as opposed to a plus. Take well, it's private, right? Well, if it's illegal, illegal drug use could violate federal contracts and would also break a company, company uh, policies. You know, you, it has- Hold up a minute here. I think it's possible there's a conflation of some of these allegations here. If somebody in their own time, when they're not on the clock, is altering their conscious state, that's a very different matter to them doing it while they're at work. Are the implications here that Musk is turning up to Tesla to run an earnings call 500 micrograms deep? That seems to be what I'm hearing here. They have an opportunity to do all this in college, like most of us. I don't 
see why he would still. When I first uh, heard, I thought, what drugs are still illegal? You walk down the street <laughs> in New York City, and you get a contact high anywhere you go. I can understand the key man theory. Yeah. Uh, because these companies, both SpaceX and Tesla, are entirely dependent on Elon Musk still being there. Even Ron Barron has told us that, one of his most fervent defenders, a huge long-term bullish investor. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, we'll see. I, I, he's 50-something. He's in his mid- Yeah, he's young 50s. I think he's 52 or 53. S- yeah. Still dabbling, dabbling a bit. In the, you know, the psychedelic drugs are... There's a big well, ketamine is the one that Matthew resurgence. Perry yeah, but that's for from. trying to get off of something else, uh, yeah. among other things. And, and you know, if I guess if in college you skip that that period, uh, you know, people to want to. Ch- well, I mean, you know, some people think it's mind. You remember Timothy? You don't remember I'm, probably. No, Timothy I Leary I, was a I, huge yes, I, I, uh, yes, advocate of the mind expanding properties. And there's and, a huge portion in Silicon Valley that thinks a portion of people that think yeah, the same thing. That exactly. Think if you very lightly experiment with some of these psychedelic drugs. It actually opens your mind to the possibility for additional creative uses. I've never tried any of them, but. Well, my condolences, Becky. It's a shame. I mean, uh, no, I would never have done such a thing either. I would never have tried these things. It's quite interesting, though, to see this conversation at least happening and Joe being aware that there are some studies into psychedelics and some of their properties with addiction and to continue that train of thought, treatment-resistant depression, PTSD. Shout out to maps.org in particular, who are the primary beneficiary of my will, in case you didn't know that. I do just have one further comment regarding the legality or otherwise of these potential compounds. It is my firm belief that adults should be free to do whatever they wish with their own consciousness as long as it doesn't cause a negative impact on other people. And I'm happy to admit that I will not comply. The idea that governments can make illegal the decision of an adult to alter their state of consciousness, causing no harm to any other human, and in many cases, trigger alert, nor to themselves, apart from a potential psychological risk of a very bad time. And of course, caveat there, people with history of mental illness, forms of psychosis, delusions, etc. Probably not a good idea to go anywhere near this stuff. But outside of that, the fact that a government can make something illegal that doesn't cause any harm to anyone, somebody who just wants to explore themselves internally to alter their state of consciousness, there's almost no difference between this and creating laws against thinking certain thoughts. And I, for one, will never comply. If you lived in a country that, let's just say for whatever reason, perhaps religious, had a law that you must murder your firstborn child, torture them and make sure they end up dying from the torture and the pain. Would you comply? Sometimes laws are not reasonable. Sometimes laws are in fact completely unreasonable. And I personally think that in the case of unreasonable laws, we should proactively disobey. <laughs> I'm not going to weigh in. I'm going to sit silently. I got kids. No, I said. <laughs> Joe's hilarious. He, he, he's more than dabbled. I think Joe about to say I don't want to get cancelled by admitting previously that I altered my state of consciousness and I didn't turn into a terrible human, I didn't die and didn't kill anybody and everything was fine. Can you, by the way, imagine just even 10 years ago this conversation would not have even taken place. Joe wouldn't have even been willing to hint at his past use of psychedelics. Why how times change? It wasn't, you know, college was, you're going to experiment, it seemed like you get beyond it by the time you're 50, but maybe not. You know, each is own. But, but it, it, it isn't a private matter. It's a, it's a, a publicly, publicly held company right. and a defense contractor. It is a private matter. What somebody does on their own time with their own consciousness is entirely a private matter. Except, of course, when the HG media runs with the ball and latches onto this article for the clicks. I'm not going to watch these all, but just a few more headlines here. Elon Musk's alleged drug use causing turmoil for Tesla and SpaceX executives. Musk's drug use is latest headache for Tesla's board. With a little label here, Musk has used illegal drugs. By the way, do you guys remember? Most of you won't have seen it, but Musk actually a few months ago literally admitted to stealing a car when he was a kid. He returned it, and I believe this was specifically to go buy a Dungeons and Dragons thing or something like that. It's funny the media must have missed this because <laughs> I would have thought that the titles would be everywhere. Elon Musk admits to car theft. But now some more related drama. If Elon Musk leaves Tesla, we have a big problem, analyst says. 
It was a roller coaster 2023 for Tesla, from the price cuts to the launch of its much anticipated Cybertruck, but the stock still gained over 100%. A new report from the Wall Street Journal points to concerns for the company, executives from Tesla and SpaceX claiming uneasiness over Elon Musk's illegal drug use. With the EV giant gearing up to report fourth quarter earnings in the coming weeks, what are the biggest risks for investors? We've got the man, the myth, the legend himself, Craig Irwin, <laughs> Roth MKM Senior Research Analyst. Great to see you here in person, Craig. What an intro. We had to give you the intro. Yeah, of course, all the bells up. and whistles, Craig. Look, at the end of the day, when you think about this most recent overhang, of course, there have been larger questions about Musk's conduct, both inside of and outside of the company. What does this latest kind of drudge of news really put in the throes for Tesla shareholders? L let's be brutally honest here, right? Um, drugs are bad, right? Yes. Drugs are bad. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I can feel it coming on right now. We've got a huge NPC spiel about drugs are bad. All drugs are bad. Craig, what is a drug? Caffeine is bad. Aspirin is bad. Now, I, I, I'm willing to go out on a limb here. I would be willing to bet my entire net worth and then some that Mr. Irwin has not once in his life altered his state of consciousness through any of the aforementioned tools that Elon is accused of recreationally using. For had he... He may not say such things as Tesla doesn't have anything that Toyota doesn't already have. I just have to listen to Craig say this again. Hilarious. And again, no nuance. The term drug covers so many things. Anything you can take that has a physiological impact on you, considered a drug. This is just too good not to hear again. What does this latest kind of drudge of news really put in the throes for Tesla shareholders? L l let's be brutally honest here, right? Um, drugs are bad. Right, yes. and I'm well known for not being a fanboy, right? I, I'm not a fan of Elon Musk himself. I'm a huge fan of his success in EVs, right? Um, I, think this, I think this has been known to people in uh, government for many years. I first had a conversation with someone in a, in a relevant um, entity about this more than five years ago. Mm. And I think that there are... Extremely likely he's referring to discussions that occurred after Elon Musk didn't inhale a legal puff of a joint of cannabis with Joe Rogan, which again was legal to consume in California where the podcast took place, I believe in 2018. And the guy didn't even inhale. And that was enough to cause conniptions at NASA. Oh my God, let's go drug test this guy for a bunch of years now because he didn't even inhale some illegal cannabis on a Joe Rogan podcast. Idiots. Oh, by the way, I just, I just can't, I'm wondering something. I wonder if, if Craig considers Ozempic to be a drug because drugs are bad, remember? Just, just throwing that out there randomly for no reason at all are several other uh, people that could have been highlighted in that article. So it, it smells like a hit piece, right? Why? Oh my God, he's right. It is a hit piece. As Craig's pointing out, we heard this whole spiel half a decade ago and out of absolutely nowhere, it has resurfaced. I've got to give credit to Craig. He's called a spade a spade here. It is a hit piece from the fake news. Who again, for the record, will continue to do whatever it takes in an attempt to damage Elon Musk's reputation and by proxy, all of his companies, his endeavors, his friends, the attacks will only get worse and more absurd leading into the US presidential election because those who seek to control the one true narrative have lost control of the one true narrative thanks to Musk's acquisition of X. If I could, I'd give Craig a fist bump through the screen right now. The fact that he just called a spade a spade, accurately labeling this as a hit piece, bravo Craig. If only he called Tesla a spade and mentioned that they're not just a car company and they do actually have things that Toyota doesn't have. Right now is the bigger question. Um you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, given that Tesla's really executing. They're doing a phenomenal job at SpaceX. Um, you know, and we can talk about real risks that don't have anything to do with uh, Elon's recreational uh, chemistry. But is there, though, a sort of overhang just in terms of some of that uncertainty, given the fact whether or not investors, shareholders should be looking past these recent headlines, but in terms of what that could then mean for leadership of the company down the line. How do you evaluate that as an analyst? I, I think I think Elon Musk is the key man at Tesla. Mm -hmm. He's the key man at Tesla. You can put him in one of his rockets and send him to Mars. Mm -hmm. He's still the key man at Tesla, mm -hmm. right? So he is a colorful, creative character. He is known as being a difficult, charismatic man. Um, and, you know, I think if, he's, if he leaves Tesla, we have a big problem, right? He's the one that basically... Um, has been the creative drive behind this company. And, you know, I give him full credit for the success of the EV industry today. I think that Musk has, deserves tremendous credit for the success of the industry, and the industry is inevitable now. And that would not have happened without Musk. What are your biggest risks? By the way, you, you won euphemism of the day with <laughs> recreational chemistry. Uh, but at the end of the day here, we got to think about what are the biggest risks to Tesla that you're kind of looking through and trying to evaluate here in 2024? 
Ah, it's demand, right? Demand and obviously competition. Yeah. Right. <laughs> God damn it, Craig. I knew it wouldn't take long before he <laughs> delivered the goods. Can confirm, according to Craig, the competition is still coming. All over themselves, not for Tesla. And apparently demand. That is a big concern for Tesla as well. Craig, I'm here to tell you at the end of this year, Tesla will have sold every vehicle they produced and the number of vehicles they produced will be more than last year. And you can safely copy and paste that statement and apply it to every subsequent year this decade and beyond. Now 2024 and we're still hearing the concerns about demand. God damn it, dude. Right, so the lightning most visibly cut its forecast in half. Um, you know, sell side uh, consensus numbers for about 22% growth, you know, 20% unit growth, right? 20% uh, revenue growth still seems a little aggressive, right? We're going to have continued price cuts, you know, ever since, um, you know, even in the first quarter, everybody was saying that the, the second quarter would be the bottom. Well, no, it wasn't. You know, this last quarter was not the bottom. You know, I, I don't think that... Um, Fourth quarter margins are likely to be particularly strong. I think they are quite likely to be weak, even though we did see a 5% beat on units. Mm -hmm. So we probably see continued margin uh, weakness throughout this year as they put through price cuts. They deal with issues in China. You know, um, having BYD larger than them in China is a huge deal. You know, that's... Wait, wait, wait. What? What? Huh? what? So if you don't know, in the last quarter of last year, BYD sold a few more electric vehicles globally, which is pretty much exclusively in China and a few outside, than did Tesla. This, of course, is entirely irrelevant. Electric vehicles in 23 were roughly 10% of all new vehicles sold. That's my guess. We'll have the data soon. A decade from now, they'll be roughly 100%. The entire pie is growing. This makes absolutely no sense. What BYD is doing are selling vehicles for a fraction of the cost as Tesla, predominantly in China, and growing. At the same time that BYD is doing their thing, Tesla continues to sell more vehicles extremely profitably and scale production, maintain a huge technological lead, BYD's, quote, success makes no difference to Tesla. If BYD sells a vehicle, that doesn't mean that Tesla won't be able to sell a vehicle to a customer as a result. What's he talking about? That's their most important, most profitable market. You know, they, they have fundamental structural challenges that they need to deal with. And it brings us back to, you know, what are the strategic bungles over the last couple of years? And going off of that, what you just said. What the, f what structural, what, what is he talking about? Does anyone know? Fundamental structural challenges. Is that what he said? What is he? I just don't understand what he's talking about. And again, I don't think Craig knows what he's talking about either. Shout out to his $85 price target. About BYD and the fact that they did overtake Tesla. What do you think that signals, more broadly speaking, if we take a step back, not just about Tesla, but really about China's involvement and maybe leadership here going forward within the EV space? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very important question. They should have launched the mini car. They were supposed mm. to have launched that, or at least made the decision to launch that in 19, and they punted. Um, you know, uh, ostensibly because it would have been margin, gross margin dilutive. Well, look at margins now, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, India, they hemmed and hawed from what I understand about entering that market. So Times of India has confirmed there's a 500,000 unit facility that's going to get built. You know, Musk has got to start making more noise about that. You know, these are, these are big structural challenges um, that if he wants to be the player with his 20 million units that he dreams about, you know, I don't endorse that number. Mm -hmm. But to start getting there, he's going to have to do a lot better job internationally and then as far as diversity of offering. I'm confused. So apparently the, the structural challenges were the Tesla hasn't ramped their production as fast as Craig Irwin thinks they should have or need to. What? Was he not paying attention when Tesla unveiled less than a year ago the modular manufacturing system for the next-gen vehicle? Was he not listening to the recent earnings call in which they said that they'll be first ramping up production of that vehicle in Austin, then building out the Mexico factory and ramping there? Was he not listening when they said they've nearly finished the manufacturing systems for that next-gen vehicle? This is quite the mixed bag from Craig. And so for all of the different kind of hats that Elon Musk wears over this time. You're talking about more kind of considered price cuts potentially, especially within China to try and retain the consumer mindset in that region, which is shifting more nationalistic, if you will. And then additionally, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, the Model Y, Tesla's Model Y, was the number one selling vehicle in China. Recent data showing that BYD had four electric vehicles in the top 10, all of which were beaten by Tesla's single model, the Model Y. In what reality are Chinese consumers skewing more nationalistic? How is it that a foreign automaker, Tesla, has the number one selling vehicle in China, Model Y, beating out all the local players at their home ground? I, I just don't understand. Or maybe they don't understand. You got to think about where within the productions that they've brought online, 
where do they scale that back as some of the other U.S. automakers have had to do as well with their own operations to try and satisfy some of the more international ambitions that they do have. In the what the? I'm so confused. Is he is he saying that Tesla's going to need to scale back like some of the U.S. automakers like GM and Ford? Is this real life? In their EV targets that they've set forth. So I, I, I don't see a lot of scaling back of manufacturing per se. Okay. I th Again, credit where it's due. Dude gets it. It's nice to hear Craig saying some things about electric vehicles at least that make sense. Very polite way of him saying, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? I think, you know, the idea of maybe uh, Shanghai going to 3 million units, we should consider that on hold. Um, you know, Shanghai uh, will probably look to optimize its utilization at that facility. I think we should really look at, you know, India. I think we should look at Mexico and potentially Canada. Um, and how do they, how do they serve, um, how do they serve the North American customer more profitably? Yeah. Those I think are the most important questions. I think this may be the least embarrassing thing that Craig's ever said about Tesla over an extended period of time in the finance media. Not that I agree on every point, but bro, I almost feel like the guy's starting to turn a new leaf. Of course, I'm sure his next appearance, he'll regurgitate that Tesla doesn't have anything that Toyota doesn't already have. And the guy's still got an $85 price target on Tesla stock. But hey, got to give some credit where it's due. The fact that he called out the fake news hit piece on Musk, a hit, he literally called it a hit piece. I mean, what an absolute legend. Craig has earned a tiny bit of my respect today. Tiny bit. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to commit mass genocide by altering my state of consciousness. Uh, 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 I'm just kidding. Bye. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. Ate like trash. Rarely exercised. Used alcohol as a stress crutch. Cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass. Got me back to the gym. Motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a f ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point and something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy... Everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And, of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f***, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely 
It's not that AG1 shit, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.